everyone. This is our last lesson in the series of lessons on a special personalized insect in its environment. And it's been a jam packed course with lots and lots of learnings and lots of play. Um, and we, yeah, we followed quite a journey. So first of all, uh, we basically went into our imagination and accessed an insect, imagining that we had shrunk to the size of an insect, that we were the same size of the insect, imagining its kind of special features and its special qualities and really kind of getting in touch with that insect. And we went on to create an environment by using rubbings, leafy rubbings, grassy rubbings, real leaves, uh, wet on wet techniques. So we had kind of a very chancy experience of creating an environment. And we went on to create an object onto which the insect needed to sit. So whether it be a flower or a leaf or grasses, that was the next step. And we experienced mosaics. So basically using magazines, cutting them into small pieces and creating a mosaic leaf or flower. Um, and finally, we went on to our insect and we looked at the proportions of the insect, the head, the thorax, the abdomen. We looked at its special features, feelers, wings, legs, what it could do, what it couldn't do. And we worked on composition. So where to place the insect in relationship to the object and where to place the object within the environment. And we talked about thinking out of the box, like it can fly off to one side of the page or drop down or rise up out of. And finally, we brought all of these three aspects, the environment, the object, and the insect together by creating a raised art piece by using little pieces of card. Um, so you'll remember I used this one as an example, this particular grasshopper. And as you can see, it's kind of semi-raised. It's a semi-3D artwork, lots and lots of fun. So as I said last week, the pieces to some degree could come to completion here. Uh, they are uh, basically integrated. We've brought all the colors in, we've brought it together and we've made one art piece. Some learners will need this lesson to continue to finish this piece and others will have some spare time. And this is where the real fun comes in. So now we start talking about found objects and adding value. And you get all different kinds of learners. Some people love bling. They'll go for all the shiny things and they'll put more and more and more on. And others want to keep it simple. It's quite amazing. There are quite a few children that just don't want any of that shiny stuff. Uh, so it's really, really important not to say to learners, do this or do that or put this there or put that there. They're going to have their special feeling and special taste. So I would like to just inspire you a little bit by talking about what kinds of found objects we can add to our insects. So just a couple of things that don't cost any money. We're looking at pieces of glass from the glass shop, Glassman or Glassfit. Um, obviously they are, you know, they're generally small and they're not going to cut people when they're, when they're that size. Um, we need to take precautions though. Uh, buttons are always wonderful to collect and things from the hardware store. Uh, little washers and things. I've got little pieces of mosaic tiles, bottle tops, um, pieces of leftover wool. You might want to use real leaves and feathers. And also as teachers, when you start collecting these things, you'll be amazed at how many people donate things and how your stash gets bigger and bigger. So I've got boxes of these types of things that I've been collecting over the years, including things like tea leaves. So even that can be glued on or sand. Um, and of course, then you get the things that do cost money, but they're not that expensive. These were donated. I didn't have to pay anything. Um, and we're looking at things like sequins and beads and these special kind of flat beads. Um, so all these fun, shiny things. You don't have to have expensive things. You can make all sorts of things from shiny paper that people toss away or tin foil. And I also just want to mention that for wings, you may want to have um, you know, plastic that you can glue on over the wings. It gives it some added detail. And you can also use um, colored plastics. So you get the see-through colored plastic that you could also use for dragonfly wings and things like that. Um, and some glitter glue, of course. So here are just a few ideas. 
um, I'd like you to go and collect as many things as possible. And just remember that tons of things can be found actually out in nature. They don't have to be bought. And try to find things that resonate with your insect. Is it a shiny insect? Is it a spiky insect? Is it a silky insect? Okay, and what is it in its environment? Are there little dewdrops on the leaves? Are there perhaps other little insects or creatures within the leaves? You know, what is it? Do you have any pipe cleaners that perhaps you could use for, for feelers? So now we're looking at adding value to our already enriched insect. Lots and lots of fun. All right, gather your things together and we'll be back here in a moment.